There we go. There it is. There we go. Now we go. Now we go. Three, two, one. Well, Mayor Shane, uh, welcome back. Mayor's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU.com. Uh, your office looks the same level of empty <laughs> that it usually does, which obviously means that you haven't started moving out just yet. No, I have not. I have till April 15th is my last uh, <laughs> April official 15th. day. Yeah, day. <laughs> something tells me you're not going to need any sort of dolly or any help emptying the office out that day. Well, I'm a minimalist, so <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot of paraphernalia around yeah. here. <laughs> not like, yeah, some of us where if we do ever have to vacate our office, uh, this isn't actually my office that I'm in right now, but I would certainly need a couple of boxes. Uh, some of the things that not have been me. accumulated. In there. <laughs> not but, me at all. But hey, you're again, you're still in the office. You're still doing the job. Uh, give us uh, j- just kind of an idea of where you're at as far as um, making the list of projects that are in process, so you can pass that on to the uh, to the next guy. Say, so is the Verso Mill at the top of that list? Well, the mill is always on that list. Um, you know, it, and yes, we are creating a list. You know, I think for the next mayor, April, when they step into office, one of the busiest times is trying to find appointees for uh, boards and commissions because we have turnover or expiration of terms. And so we spend, uh, that was probably my biggest challenge is, you know, calling and groveling and begging to see if people would join boards and commissions and, so we're kind of accumulating that and some other reminders that uh, the new mayor needs to do at the beginning there. And Emily, she says, you know, well organized. And so she's already has notes and lists. And so kind of working through that. And that's what we'll be doing in the next few months. You know, I, I keep telling people, you know, I, I kind of come in and I don't know what to do almost in the sense that I'm not working on any projects. Uh, there's nothing I'm kind of like building to for this year. So I'm just kind of keeping holding the place together and, you know, taking care of my uh, media responsibilities and my, my council or committee, you know, meetings that I go to and just kind of taking it day by day. But yeah, there's just not a lot of projects going on right now. And this time of the year is historically quiet also. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are in that, uh, in that mode where I I believe (laughs) after uh, the, you know, by the time, when this actually airs, the city of Wausau will not have had a meeting for a week. Uh, no meeting scheduled until at least, I believe, January 2nd or 3rd. Uh, yeah. So we're in the, the window where everybody kind of wants to just be hands off and away from their government, probably because the property tax bill just showed <laughs> up. And, you know, now all of a sudden everybody has to uh, scramble to find that money one way or another. Yeah, you know, that uh, yearly reminder of our... <laughs> homage to government that we do and yeah that's will be coming out shortly and then yeah just the christmas season and the holiday seasons and you know people are more focused on that at this time of the year and development kind of slows until after the new year and then that, those start you know people start thinking about permits and permissions for different things and so they'll start to ramp up a little bit and be just in time to turn the reins over but you did bring up a, a great point that you will be needing uh, some more appointees or volunteers to serve on uh, commissions. Of course, uh, those that are the commissions involved, those that are not elected officials, committees right. consist mostly of elected officials. But if you've got commissions, you're going to need people to serve on that. And I know that's something that, as you mentioned, you're always looking for good help in that area. There is. There's a lot of importance uh, boards and commissions in the city and all communities. Are, every mayor is faced with this. And so, yeah, people, you know, the, the nice uh, people contact me asking about boards and commissions. You can be on one that meets twice a year. You can meet on one that uh, meets maybe twice a month. So it kind of depends on your level of involvement that you want to be involved in or not. And that that's kind of the nice thing about them. And then there's different areas of interest. So you have a particular specialty or expertise you know you know I, I think about you know some of our boards and commissions that have accountants attorneys you know those kind of things on that bring a good dynamic to those boards and commissions and and their skill set can help aid in boards and commissions and then uh what is the process for applying for one of for, those 
Yeah, for us, so you just go out on our website and uh, we have an online application and those can be submitted. We ask for kind of a, a resume or a lot of times I'll call people and say, okay, why are you particularly interested in this board or commission or is it just something you want to try, you know? And so I try to gauge that a little bit too to see if they can bring a value to that board or commission because if not, then it just frustrates the other boards and board members. So try to make a good match, but there's I can find a home for people that are looking for something to do. And I think the most important thing uh, that you need though, and it's the reason that anybody like you uh, gets into this business. You're, you simply want to help the community, mm -hmm. help solve problems, right. help move the community forward. And that's really uh, the most important thing. Uh, I guess the old adage would be you, you hire for enthusiasm and then train for skill, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I believe that with our, our, you know, our entry level people here also is that, you know, trying to find a good fit for the organization because most of the time, if you don't need a professional education, you can train people. And so I think the dynamics of the employee pool, it's important to have people that work well within that group because it just keeps the continuity and the cohesiveness of that group together. And then you can train them for what you need, to, need them to do. Or there's so many areas of that you can get into specializing within different departments within cities that one may not be your strength, but another one might be. But I think that's one of the more important things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, if somebody wants to know what's available or what will be available coming up starting in uh, April, May, how do they get a hold of the city? Um, go on our website. Uh, we have our city directory out there and it has all the, the people on those boards and commissions and their expiry, term expirations. And then um, you can always email us or give us a call. Yes, indeed. And Emily will point you in the right direction. She's never steered me wrong yet. I know she's never steered you wrong yet. In fact, oh. she, in fact, she corrects my work sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she does phenomenal. yours as well. So, yeah, that's the benefit uh -huh. of the next mayor. They get they get her as their executive coordinator because she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's that makes that transi transition for me, relatively easy. You know, the new person's going to have a huge learning curve and there's going to be a lot thrown at that person, but Emily is the continuity of the office. And I know one of the, the big things, I mean, we've already kind of mentioned it, uh, is going to be the Verso mill. I know obviously this is something that the city wanted to have solved uh, two years ago. You've wanted to have it solved a year ago. In fact, you would prefer to have had it solved yesterday as yeah. well you just want the space that plot of land that is generating uh, little to no tax revenue right now you want to have that a thriving hopping place the way it was three years ago before it was uh shut down what is the latest on that is that something that's kind of on the back burner right now because uh you're, there's going to be transition or is that something that you're maybe trying to to grease some skids on a bit so that way there is some momentum for the next guy we, we talk about it weekly. So uh, this uh, never far from our minds. Um, it's held in private ownership. So you know, you're kind of dealing with what they want to do with the property. And, you know, I'll be honest, every week that goes by, you, you have less positive feelings and because buildings are meant to be used and idle buildings deteriorate quicker and less maintained. So every... I always look out the window over there. The hopes become less as time goes by. And in reality, I don't know if he'll ever open it as a paper mill. I just don't know. You know, I don't have that crystal ball. But, you know, hopefully there will be a use for it that will benefit the community, whether it be, uh, you know, employment base and some of those other things to, that can dramatically help out our community by having employees here and making a, a good wage to do that. Yeah, because at, at this point, as you mentioned, you, there's really not a lot of hope that it's going to become a paper mill. Again, a coded paper, you know, actual notebook paper, whatever paper that may be, the trading cards that uh, some of us collect, whatever. Uh, but obviously there's space there. And oh, yeah. space could create a mixed-use development. You know, that could mm -hmm. be some sort of a health campus or even just a, a little, you know, a strip mall shopping center, whatever it may be. And that can only happen now if 
the actual private owners decide they finally want to wash their hands of it, correct? Correct. Correct. There are parts of the mill, the, the lower mill, it's owned by a private company called Sunoco, and, and uh, they're thriving. And then um, the converting plant that um, Belarus still owns and operates, they're bringing paper in to have it converted to whatever their customer specifications are. Uh, I know Wood's leaving their rail yard to, to go up to Michigan. Um, so there's still activity there, and there's still have several hundred people that work there. But yeah, the 900 and when I was growing up here, the thousands of people that uh, worked in the paper industry here, you know, that's kind of what has come down to a couple hundred employees that, um, but sounds like what I've heard is, you know, they're thriving, everything's going well, and Sunoco is very doing very well there, and hopefully that will continue on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, so what, what, what I'm hearing, though, is they're not really using the footprints that they have. There's some activity that's going on there, but that um, could happen also in a smaller footprint, which then would lead to redevelopment uh, elsewhere. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and right now the elsewhere part of it is what's still mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Yeah. Up in the air. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. You just, uh, we communicate with them. We try to, and, but obviously they have a board and, a business model and plan that we're not a part of and um, but our community is strong and thriving and you know obviously every community wants that next big industry or next big employer and we're no different than anybody else we just kind of took a hit for a couple of years ago and it didn't help and but community is still here still going on and housing market is great it's hard to find housing and you know, our, our, we have great small businesses here that uh, I hope are seeing a boost in the holiday season and some, some developments that are going on currently in the city. And yeah, we're still moving ahead. Absolutely. Well, Mayor Shane, we always appreciate the time. Uh, look forward to chatting again next month. We've only got a couple of these left, so we will we'll make them count. And uh, all the best as we head into 2024. Well, I look forward to the highlight reel and uh, Merry Christmas to you and have a have a great holiday with your family and friends.